Well, good morning, everyone. The patient on the bench today is another tube tester. This is the B&K Model 707 Dynajet, and it's listed as a dynamic mutual conductance tube tester. But we'll get a little more into that in just a moment. This uh, tube tester was made between the uh, late 60s early 70s and B&K made quite a bit of them I mean it's the uh, model after the original 700 tube tester now as I said uh, they list this as a dynamic mutual conduction tube tester which is not completely accurate if you are uh, going to check some 6146's and you uh, install them in the lower sockets and test them you are testing emissions only and on the other hand if you're testing audio tubes or like the 12AXT7 or something in that series you are checking mutual conductance but uh, pretty much all the major RF tubes are going to be emission type only so yeah a little bit misleading how they call this a mutual conductance tester but you know it was a good tester um, if you were a technician you know you have this on the bench it's real good for sorting through tubes and uh, testing for shorts and percentage and, and so forth now as we look at this from a uh, a distance that you're seeing it now the old tester doesn't look bad at all it's happened to uh, been here in the shop for quite some time and I just haven't been able to get to it and now I need to go ahead and get it fixed up and uh, return it back to the west coast this unit has been used quite a bit and the way that you can tell that if you uh, look here around the uh, front knob you can see the wear mark where somebody's been using their hands and letting the fingers rub on the front face plate and has wore the uh, paint off and over on the other side you can see the short test button and the grid emission test button the uh, lettering is just about wore off and it but as we inspect this thing real closely I don't know just how well y'all can see this you can look inside those uh, two pin sockets and you can see they are just full of uh, what looks like dust or lint or something so that kind of worries me at the uh, the shape of the tube sockets um, you know it's a lot of tube sockets to have to replace I was just looking and we can see that uh, someone has replaced tube socket number 11 and how do we notice this well if you look at the other tubes you can see the rivets are facing inward and on number 11 the rivets are facing outwards I don't know what they were thinking about when they got into this but <laughs> they uh, did that one a little backwards but you know the first thing we're going to do just some minimal cleaning and blow it all out with some compressed air see can't we get all that stuff out of the sockets and we'll clean the switches and and so forth and go ahead and recap it and see if we can get the thing to work then we'll worry about doing cosmetic cleaning there's no need of uh, cleaning everything real pretty and then find out that the transform was no good or you know there's some other problem and it's gonna delay repair of this um, we will repair it regardless you know but 
there's just no need of putting that kind of time into something to find out that there's something in there that's unattainable and can't be fixed so the main thing is is to get it electrically working and then we'll uh, you know get into it and see if we can get it looking nice you can see it also has the uh, front cover uh, a lot of these get lost misplaced uh, you know people put the testers on the bench and the uh, top part of the case gets set aside and then as life goes on uh, it gets thrown out or lost or whatever in fact I do not have the top case for my old night tube tester but I do for my Hitchcock so we'll go ahead and get the uh, panel took off and we'll look at the back side of it and see just what we need to do We also have part of the original manual and most of the time the uh, manual would have the production date of the particular unit it came with. However, it looks like a lot of this manual is missing. So we will not have that uh, production date. But maybe we can find something on the inside that will tell us just when this thing was made and you can download these manuals off the internet and in fact they got several different varieties of it with different tubes in it so that makes it nice for uh, tubes that were not listed back in those, the day when this was uh, produced so uh, that should be no problem at all okay so I got the uh, one screw out that was holding this on and we're ready to uh, go ahead and lift the case. You know, one good thing, all the uh, knobs are in place. Um, none of them missing. Don't run of damage. All the push buttons are here. We do have a uh, fuse in here. And it is a slow blow. one out fuse so that's good no one has uh, over fused this yes. so <laughs> that's good and another good thing is it does have the uh, plate clap lead in here which a lot of these get missing over the years but this one does have it we'll lift up here with fuse we can get in here and pull this out and turn it over. Well, here's a bottom side view of the unit, and uh, you can see. Uh, we have a 6B N8 that's still installed and uh, this happens to be a Sylvania and looks like a uh, replacement tube from what would original had been in here. You can also see that the uh, number 83 rectifier tube is not installed in this unit and looking at it it appears to have came from the factory without that tube we can look here at the bottom of the uh, tube socket and you can see there's two diodes have been installed now originally like I say this comes with a tube and you would have uh, two brown wires two red wires coming up to this rectifier tube and mostly when people change that out all they do is put two 10 ohm 1 watt resistors that come up and tie together and then two uh, 1 in 4007 diodes come in and tie together and you put a fuse across it and that helps protect all the circuitry the way these diodes are wired in and looking at it uh, and I do not see the other wire that would normally be in here this looks like a factory uh, 
solid state rotor fire circuit. Um, you know, looking at it, it just doesn't look like something that somebody has went back and, and done. It's just too neat the way it is, you know. I mean, these things are rat nest for wires anyway, but this just looks too factory-ish, you know, to have been done by someone else. So I'm, I'm calling that a, a factory mod when it was built. See, it has most of the uh, original electrolytic capacitors installed. You have one here on the meter, and uh, there's two back here. And this capacitor over here looks like a uh, replacement. And if we look at this uh, electrolytic capacitor over here, you see it says December of 1967. So sometime around 67, 68 is when this uh, unit was most likely built. You can also see that uh, where the uh, clamp is for the original number 80 three two would be in and like I say I just don't think this is uh been replaced. I think it's factory mod. So another important uh component when you're dealing with these tube testers is uh not only the electrolytic capacitors but the resistors. And you can see this one is full of these big green CRC types. These are uh, Vishade Dale resistors. And usually I find them to be pretty accurate. Even if they are 40, 50 years old. Um, let me just test a few. 470 ohm. It's at 465, 2.4K. It's 2.4. This is a 1K. It's 994 ohms. It's another 1K. It's 1K. So 330 ohms, 340 ohms, 2.6k, it's a 2.7k, another 4.7k. It's reading about 4.6k so they check pretty good <clears throat> the ones that you do have to look out for are these old Adlin Bradley style resistors this is uh 18k and it's reading 19k there's one up here 6800 it's blue gray orange and this reading 80k yeah so those will have to be replaced well, like I say the green ones they look fine one good thing about it you know it doesn't have that uh, rectifier tube in it so it's not creating a lot of heat the only heat that you're going to get in this is going to be from the uh, transformer and the 6B and 8 tube. It's the only thing that's going to produce any heat. So, uh, what I need to do is get this thing blowed out and go ahead and get it recapped. And uh, we'll have to start changing out these resistors. And again, you know, it's even uh, dirty under the bottom side if you look at this tube socket here you 
you can see just how filthy that is. I don't know. It's like something was uh, poured on it. I didn't see nothing inside the bottom of the case, but yeah, it looks like uh, either soda or something was poured on it and just collected all the dust. Probably what it is, somebody used some uh, some kind of cleaner fluid with uh, a lubricant base to clean this socket and this is the uh, results of it. But yeah, she's pretty dirty. We can also see just how uh, tarnished up these uh, rotary switches are. That's going to have to be cleaned. Small one over here. It doesn't look too bad, but you know, looks can be deceiving when it comes to uh, switches like this. Fairly dirty. That one doesn't look too bad neither. But these other two, this one and that one over there, pretty dirty. And again, you know, we only got four electrolytics to uh, replace. So I'll go ahead and get those done. Um, blow this thing out, try to get some of the gunk out of it. Get the switches cleaned up, then we can uh, bring this thing up and see you know what's going on make sure that our transformer is okay and uh, we'll check this tube make sure the tube is working fine okay we replaced all four of the electrolytic capacitors we went through and we've replaced a handful of resistors that were out of tolerance and we have cleaned all the controls also, we have checked this one tube up here to make sure it was, you know, up to standard and working like it should be. Uh, I, I blew out all of the tube sockets and got all the dust out. Haven't done any cleaning of tube sockets. Um, the first thing we'll probably have to do is when we get to that step is just take a tube and go through each socket and make sure the tube is seating like it should and, and not loose and wiggling you know one of the worst things i hate is stick a tube in a tube tester and uh you get no deflection on the meter until you get grab the tube and give it a twist and most time what happens is the pins are just wild they are you know lost their strength on that little clamp and they just uh give and do not hold the tube in place those sockets just have to be replaced there's no fixing a wall out socket uh, even you know going in there and tightening up the uh, clip a little bit is only a temporary fix and something in this now if you're restoring a piece of equipment and the tube does not produce a lot of heat and has not tempered the uh, the metal pin then bending it back just to make a good connection is fine but you know in a piece of equipment like that that tube is not stuck in and poured out constantly so uh, you know something with a tube tester you might use a certain socket quite often like if you're testing a 6LQ6 or whatever you're sticking the tube in and pulling it out sticking it in pulling it out you get a lot of wear on that socket now one other thing that people really overlook when they're doing something like this right up here are two number 55 bulbs and uh, one of them is used for a pilot lamp and it also has another function now you can see there's one here and there's one way down here under this these are also part of the ALC control which is automatic line control and I don't know how many of you know that have ever worked with uh, old vintage radios that's got these bayonet style bulbs in it is that you turn the radio on and you don't see the meter light come on 
and you go up there and you tap on the bulb and it comes on well that's because these are some of the worst style lamps you can get these bayonet styles are just not reliable they will fail over time and in this circuit it's very critical that you have continuity on ground and on the uh, positive side of the, of this lamp holder if by any chance you lose continuity and you're testing a bunch of tubes to match them up then you're going to get erratic readings and you're going to think that these tubes are the same and those tubes are different and it's all going to be because of these lamps like you know not making correct continuity so here on the schematic you can see uh, two lamps which is M5 and M6 like I said they're number 55 bulbs and uh, you see when we come off the secondary the transformer through the uh, 9.5 volt AC to uh, R20 which is a 10 ohm available resistor and then this feeds in this uh, lamp circuit and then goes on off to the other circuit so you can see just how these are balanced by this uh, resistor which is R21 it's 16 ohm 5 watt resistor and a lot of times I've seen people replace these lamps with all different types of uh, different bulbs and that just throws the circuit off so these are very critical so you might say you you know how do you stop this you take the lamp out clean the socket clean the uh, the end of the uh, bulb and put it back in and you're good to go no I don't know how many times I have seen where you take one of these lamps and you clean it and uh, you clean the socket and put it back in and a few weeks or a few months down the road the lamp is out again and that's because it corrodes you know this is brass and solder and you're up against tin uh, in a tin spring so it's going to automatically corrode and there is a way around that now it'd be hard to see this on the camera but the lamp fixture does have a hole all the way through the center that comes right out here at the back on the uh, positive side and then you have your ground shielding here and this is how we solve this problem so as you can see here to solve that problem we just tack solder the piece of wire right to the end of the bulb and then solder the another piece coming off the uh, ground now usually there's a little solder spot on this brass and you can just fresh it up add some solder and put your wire on it now this will slide right into that bayonet socket and that will go through right through the center hole and then you can just bring it out the back and solder it right over to the terminals bend the ground bleed over and solder it over to the uh, ground terminal and that will prevent the lamp from failing as far as losing continuity you know if, if uh, the lamp blows and just desolder it pull it out put a new one in so now we should be able to take our lamp right in see the wire coming out the back side push it in give it a turn and we should be good to go okay now that our lamp is installed all I have to do is take this wire bend it down and solder it to this point take this wire that's here you can see this wire that comes here goes to the same spot and just uh, roll it over and solder it here now we have a proper connection on this bulb and we won't have to ever worry about that losing connection
Okay, so I went ahead and uh, brought the unit up on a variac and checked the voltages and all the voltages on the transformer looks perfect, no problems at all. I put a 6AU6 tube in socket number one. Got heater selector number six with a load of uh, should be 82 according to the manual. And all that you can really check other than shorts is the uh, emissions test and you use that by doing testing on uh, test one. And we can see that our tube is in the group. The uh, green is showing about, looks like about 85-86%. So the tester does now work. And what I need to do now is uh, go ahead and give it a good cleaning, clean all these sockets, and then we can do an alignment on it. But we'll do that in part two of the video. I'll go ahead and turn the unit off. Like I say, at least we know that this part is working. And, uh, you know, like I say, I have to take a tube and go through all the sockets now socket number two is good and tight and you will see with uh, the tubes that or the you know used in this socket is kind of uncommon tubes uh, socket three is not too bad um, 6AQ5 would be used there so that would be a uh, Poplar tube to be checking. Socket number four. It's a little loose. Five looks okay. Six is good and tight. Again, you know, it's going to you know, depend on the tube's numbers. And um, seven is good. Now I have to get some different tubes and go ahead and, and get all these checked and uh, make sure that, you know, there's two sockets. Two socket one seems to have a lot of wear in it. The tube just basically falls right in. So we know that one's going to have to be replaced. Two socket 35 has a chipped edge on one of the pins. Um, right here on the edge, top edge that one probably needs to be replaced and I noticed that one of those that we tied the capacitor to on the bottom the bottom is broke out and that pin is real loose so that's another socket so I do know three sockets here that will have to be replaced hopefully we won't have to replace a whole lot of them 41's in good shape and that's all we can test with those tubes or this particular tube I was just checking some of the 9 pin tube sockets and the one that was replaced which is number 11 that's got the uh, rivets in backwards look at that no resistance whatsoever if the uh, tube tester was standing up on here, it would probably just about fall right out. So that socket also has to be replaced. Um, 12 is no good. 13 is tight. 14 is tight. 15. And just looking at some of the other sockets that would be used quite often. That's good. 21 is tight. 22. 23. Good and tight. It's 24. It's a lot of odd sockets, but it's it's tight. Anyway, uh, yeah, quite a bit of tube sockets to get replaced. Um, both 
There's the two top rows, that's probably four there, some of the big ones. But we'll have to get those uh, done. Okay, so in part two, we'll uh, replace the sockets, give this thing a good cosmetic cleaning. Uh, we'll take our meter apart, check the movement, make sure it's lubricated and working like it's supposed to. And uh, then we'll do an alignment. And it's not a lot of detail in the alignment. There's about, I think, five steps in aligning this. A um, few things that are not shown in the the manual it has very little detail on it so we'll go through that and uh, we'll pull out these knobs and clean out the gunk around them clean all the knobs up and should be a fairly decent working piece of equipment so hope you enjoyed part one and uh, part two we'll get back on the next week or two so until then we'll see you in the next video now bye